Hey everyone, in this video we will learn how to find rank of a matrix. So we have three methods here. If you want to find the rank of the matrix, we can use any of these three methods. First one is using canonical form of matrix. This canonical form of matrix is also known as normal form of matrix. The second one is by using the minors, minor of the matrix. And the third one is by using our usual Eclan form of the matrix. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll try to understand the definitions of these these terms here, and we'll try to understand the whole working uh, by using a simple example. Okay, so let's get start with the first method that we have here. Okay, the first method is by using canonical form. Any matrix A can be converted into its canonical form. Okay, so suppose that there is a matrix A and we have taken a general matrix here of order M cross N. Right, so let's say this is the matrix, then if by performing elementary row operations and elementary column operations, if we can convert this matrix into any of these forms any of these three forms any of these three forms then we can say that the converted form is the canonical or normal form of matrix A okay so what does this IK means IK means nothing but an identity matrix okay so if A is getting converted into this sort of matrix or this sort of matrix like a proper identity matrix then IK will be the form of the normal form of the matrix A okay and this K the order K will represent the rank of the matrix similarly if it is getting converted into this form in this form we have IK that is one identity matrix and one zero matrix okay so for example if matrix A is getting converted into this form so here we have our IK that is identity matrix of order 3 and we have another matrix that is 0 matrix okay so it is not necessary that this these matrices are square matrices they can be any matrix even they can be a column matrix also okay so here we have IK and here we have our 0 matrix so converted form can be any anything but it should be having one identity matrix and one zero matrix only okay similarly if it is getting converted into ik and zero then this, this can be like this also like only one so we have identity matrix as one the scalar and zero as zero matrix or it can be like this also we have our identity matrix here okay and we have a row vector 0 this can be of this representation also so here we have our ik and this is our zero matrix right and if it is getting converted into this fourth type then it can be like Similarly, it can be like a form. Here we have IK, and this is our zero matrix, zero matrix, and zero matrix. The order of these zero matrices it not not necessarily be the same. Okay, like here we have our IK, and we have this as one zero matrix this is zero matrix and this is another zero matrix okay so the order is different so if we are getting something like this sort of representation after performing elementary row and column operations and the mix of these elementary row and column operations then we can say that 
the form is the converted form is normal or canonical form of matrix and here the the key the order of the identity matrix in the representation will be the rank of the matrix so k will be the rank of the matrix rank of the matrix k right i hope you got somewhat clarity let's see with an example suppose that we have this matrix a here okay and uh, we want to convert it in canonical or normal form of matrix then what we need to do we need to perform elementary row operation and elementary column operation so you can perform the uh, mix of these elementary row and elementary column operations so here in order to convert this matrix into a canonical form matrix we perform some elementary row and column operations okay so first operation will perform this so this is the sequence of operations i haven't uh, written the matrix resultant matrix here because it would have taken unnecessarily more times more time to you know to finish up this particular topic so these are the sequence of steps i have written these steps to show that you can use the mix of the row and column operations so we have performed the row operations then after that we perform the col column operation then again row operations then again column operation and final canonical form we got like this so you can see this is our ik where k is equals to 2 so order of identity matrix is 2 and this is our zero matrix this is our zero matrix and this is our zero matrix of order 2 okay so here whatever the order of identity matrix you will get like here we got k is equals to 2 this order will be the rank of matrix rank of matrix a so on converting the matrix A into the canonical form whatever the order of the identity matrix we get in the canonical form will be the rank of the matrix A right so this was the first method the second method is by using minors so it says that K is the rank of the matrix A if and only if these two conditions are satisfied. So these two conditions is that if the determinant of at least one minor of order k is non-zero, okay, and all the other all and the determinant of all the other minors of order x, where x is greater than k, are zero. It means that in in a simple simple language, so if we have the determinant of at least one minor of order k as non-zero and the determinant of all the other minors of order that is greater than k are zero then we can say that k is the rank of the matrix okay so let's see one example here so we have taken an example let's say a is the matrix here so it is a 3 by 3 matrix okay so what, what will be the high, highest order of the minor? Obviously, it will be 3. And the minor with order 3 will be only 1. That is this matrix itself. So, okay. on finding the determinant of the minor, you get it as 0. Okay? So, since we have only one minor of order 3 and uh, the, the, the determinant of that minor is 0, so we cannot say that this is the rank of our matrix. So 3 cannot be the rank of the matrix A. Okay. 
So the next highest order minor is 2 and we have 9 such minors. So we can take any of these 9 minors and we can check whether selected minor is giving us the determinant as non-zero or not. If any one of these minors is, is giving us a non-zero determinant, then we can say that 2 is the rank of our matrix because we have already tested the conditions for order 3 and we got only one such minor and the determinant of that minor was equals to 0. So as per definition, if 2 is the rank of the matrix, then the determinant of the minor of order 3 should be equals to 0. Okay. Here we can see we have taken a minor, this 1, 2 and 2, 3 with respect to the element, with respect to the element here. 7. So we have taken this as our minor and we can see that the determinant is minus 1 that is non-zero. So the rank of the matrix will be 2. Right. If you have any confusion you can just comment and uh, I will try to explain it in a better way. Our third method was by using our Eclair form of the matrix. So it is nothing, it is actually the simpler one and uh, most of the mathematicians use this method because it is little bit simpler. So first thing is that you will have to convert your matrix into row Eclair form and after that whatever the number of non-zero rows you will get. So first convert the matrix into row Eclair form, then the number of non-zero rows that you will get in that row Eclair form will be the rank of your matrix. Okay. So I hope things are clear here and you can easily find the rank of the matrix by using any of these three methods. So hope you got something valuable from this video like it and subscribe to this channel so that you can know more about the mathematics okay thank you for watching bye